Hi, my name is John. Welcome to another Sunday night nightcap. Tonight's nightcap, I've got quite a lot of machine work going on. I make a puller uh, to remove a bearing from this tractor half shaft. I actually get the Ortec Plasma CNC cutter fired up uh, and do a little bit of cutting. I'll show a little bit of video of that. Deb does the giveaway. She gives the draw for the little clock gauge. It has quite a lot of your meal came in. I'm going to show some of that. As one or two really nice items, I'm sure you'll find it interesting. I've eventually reached the stage now where I've got power and I've got the end of the machine. As you can see, it's all fired up. I've spent basically a full day in here today going through all the tutorials. Uh, it was a bit daunting at first, but once you start to get to use it and play with it, it's not really, it's not rocket science. I mean, I'm no computer expert, but the tutorials are really helpful. Anyway, it's I've got to the stage now where I can get a photograph or a drone, I can import it into the machine, I can create a J code and I can actually cut things out. So <laughs> the time's come now to actually press a button and see if I can get a, a shape out of the machine. I don't think that's at all bad for my first day using the plasma cutter or at least using the CNC plasma cutter there's an awful lot to learn, there's loads of different parameters uh, the tutorials that are built into the computer make it reasonably easy as long as you take your time follow each, each step it, um, it's really interesting I'm looking forward to really getting into this and getting some proper videos done anyway I'm sure you recognise them. Good evening, once again welcome to one of John's Sunday night giveaways. I hope you're all well and all getting sorted for Christmas. You have a DTI. I probably got it upside down, I don't know. There we go. You've got nippy hands, stick fingers. Oh, Oh, That's great Deb, thanks very much for that. I'll get this clock gauge in the post here as soon as you email me with your address. I'm going to do another giveaway this week. This one, once again, it's a clock gauge. It's a Batty Imperial clock gauge. Once again, it's got a back mount on it. It's nice, it's a nice quality gauge. And people say that they prefer metric. I mean, an imperial gauge and a metric gauge, it makes no difference as long as the pointer doesn't move. It means your parts running through if that's what you want to use the gauge for. And basically, that's what most DTI gauges are used for to set something up true in a lathe or a milling machine. Anyway, if you want a chance at winning this clock gauge, all you have to do is send me an email with your name. That's my email up there. Your name goes into the bucket. If it's pulled out, I'll post it off anywhere in the world, completely free of charge. It's just a little way of me saying thanks for all the help I've had. Um, I think I picked this one up at a car boot sale and then Bob's had a look at it for us and cleaned it up and made it work. Anyway, well worth a go. Just email your name, that's all you've got to do. You never know, you might win. I've got a job here that I've sort of been roped into what I volunteered to do. It's a half shaft of a Massey Ferguson tractor and what the lad wants doing is that bearing changed. I thought it was a simple enough job to put it in the press at work and press it apart but it won't fit in the press and it certainly won't fit in my press here. He's got quite a few of these to do so I'm going to make a pull off for him. Um, I'll bring the camera a bit closer and show you the, the sort of set of it is down here. But what I'm thinking of is probably two bits of threaded bar like that with a strong back across the top. Fasten onto this flange. I'm sure to use that just to, to pull the bearing off. 
the bearing will be tight but not that tight because there's also a shrunk on collar that goes in to hold the bearing in. I'll bring the camera in and show you the sort of setup the bearing is. Right, what that is, is an oil seal in the bottom of there, then a bearing like that, and then a collar that goes on there that holds it all together. So I need to pull that off there, which will pull the bearing off the half shaft. These studs here look like they look like UNF 716s, I'll measure it. Certainly 716s. I've got a 716 UNF tap there, which does screw into the hole, so I know that they're 716s UNF. But fortunately, these bits of stud aren't long enough just to drill and tap the holes in the end. So what I'll do, I'll make a couple of extension pieces, just some steel bars screwed onto there, drilled and tapped and screwed on, then welded onto the welded onto here, a nice strong back across the top, and so we can get the bearing pulled off. We need to thread the each end of this Samsung CNC ONF then cut it in half and then the ball's pissed is bent This end looks fairly this end looks fairly straight. tight thread, put a pilot drill in first new tap so we'll try tapping it under power very slow feed very very slow speed and it should push itself out quite nicely
great, that's a reasonable fit and thread, I'm sure that should do the job. I just want to square the end of the bit of threaded bar up and then drill a hole in just so I can put the short rods in we've just made and then weld them in. Be a nice fit in that hole, and then we can weld it in. Fit in there quite nicely, for an exact weld around that. That'll do it nice and square. to do this job but the lad renovates those tractors and this is quite a common job for him to do. Um, if you think I've done a lot of job by making a pull up for him. Anyway, hopefully it'll, hopefully it'll get the job done for him. I found a bit of suitable material for the strong back. Make three holes drill and we'll work from the work from the centre out over. Okay, once I've got that one wheel drilled I can move out. We need to be 130mm apart, which is 65 from each. 65 out from the centre each one. Okay, so I've set a zero there, we need to go 65. Sixty-five that way. Back to zero and sixty-five. You know way, and that should give us the one thirty. So we'll measure it again. Okay, 
One thing it did, was really good for the mill machines and that is marking out and drilling for the patterns. Right, spot on 130. As I keep saying, these drills are absolutely brilliant. Uh, I've only got the one. I really would like a set of them. That's how I get to use the, this is how I use the most tapered drills in this area of spindle, just an adapter. That's most three and I have to feed the two adapter to get that drill in. Just, problem is every time you want to change the drill you've got to take the adapter out. I'll drill three holes and then move to the bigger drill I think that's better, that's actually it's actually drilling a hole instead of wearing through keep stopping and letting the chip break So that's the first one through. This will be the, the fatal size. Keep the friggin' things still.